Ezekiel <clears throat> chapter 9. He cried also in my ear with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, every man with his de destroying weapon in his hand. So we're still in the visions. Ezekiel still seeing the results of the judgment upon Jerusalem. And God's going to name it in this chapter clear. This chapter here, you'll say, why are there tornadoes? Why are there tsunamis? Why is there famine? Haven't we seen them all through Jeremiah and Ezekiel? And these, uh, these men, the charge over the city, uh, the government authority, and with destroying weapons in their hands, maybe a military. They're in charge over the city. He says, gather them up, and here they come with their weapons. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, not many, six, which lieth toward the north. And that north keeps showing up. That's where God is. But when you read of countries being destroyed, it's always by a country that's northern them. Southern America could never win the war because northern America was north. Israel was captured by Babylon, who was north of them. Babylon was, was uh, conquered by the Persians and the Medes, which is north of them, and go on and on and on. Every, I mean, Canada is north of America. Something to think about. Man slaughtered weapon in his hand, and one man among them was clothed with a linen with a writer's inkhorn by his side. So there are six men. And one of the men, of those six men, he is clothed in linen. And he has a pen, an inkhorn by his side. That's where the ink, I would assume, would be held. And he'd dip his pen in there and he would write. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. We are at the temple. We are at the spot where, where Ezekiel saw these men facing against the brazen altar to worship the sunrise. So if those men are still there worshiping the sunrise, they may not even see what Ezekiel is doing because you can't miss the sunrise service. I don't know if those men are still there with the sunrise service, but we are now what well, we've been in the temple. Now we, it's a vision. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub. And we saw, I think it was early in chapter 8, that uh, verses 8, 2 through 4, we see again the glory of God and, and Ezekiel is raptured up. So the cherubim were there. Though not mentioned, Ezekiel sees these cherubims over and over and over. Remember, it's not the cherubim we're going to worship. Now listen, when Revelation 4 says that they speak, holy, 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 I want to hear that. I want to desire to hear what a holy voice is of a lion, of an eagle, of an ox, and of a man. But I'm not going to heaven just for the cherubim. I'm going to heaven for the one that is to be glorified in heaven. God Almighty and His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. But here are the cherubim again. Upon He who was, upon, whereupon He was. And you go through the study of the Ark of the Covenant. And you go through what Ezekiel seen. You go through what the the beast that John see is it, something like. Not only is there two cherubim over God's mercy seat, but there are cherubim around the mercy seat. There was one above the mercy seat, but he's gone. So it's almost like these cherubim are carrying God around, and they got some kind of wheel. Let's go that far. To the threshold of the house. And that's the doorway. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. So God has moved himself to the doorway of the temple, and calls his one guy out, among six. 
And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city. Leave the temple. Leave my presence. Through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. All the people that are repenting, all the people who are praying, all the people who are seeking God. He says, I want you to go down there. When you find one, put a, put a mark on his forehead. And you would know Satan would have an imitation mark. Maybe so close to this mark, maybe you couldn't tell the two apart. Uh, it says that the 144,000 were marked of God. Maybe that mark is also what the 144 almost thereof like. Because Satan has everything that God has. This is an imitation and twisted. That's all I'm going to say about that. That's a whole new study as we go through the Bible. Uh, set a mark in there for And to the others, those who are not repentant, those who are not seeking God, those who don't want to do right, he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. All right, one man of six goes out, finds those who are repenting, who want to do right, reaching out to God. He says, Mark their head. You are the five soldiers? Yes, sir. If they're not marked, kill them. Sound familiar? Only if we're Satan, those who don't want God, those who will not repent, those who want to do wicked, will have Satan's mark of the beast. So maybe the 144,000 are not marked like Ezekiel because Satan has taken Ezekiel and marking his people. Maybe trying to confuse God or something. I'm just reading what the Bible says. And I can be wrong. Listen, I'm human. I don't know all about God. I don't know everything that God has planned. I'm just maybe wrong. But we do know one thing. Ezekiel chapter 9. Righteous people are being marked. Under the Antichrist, unrighteous people will be marked. Uh, I spare and they have pity. I don't care who they are. I don't even care if they're your mothers, your fathers, your children, your pastor, whoever it is. If they don't have the mark by that guy... You kill them. You want to go back under the law? I don't want to go under the law. I'd rather witness to my family than kill them. Slay utterly old and young. No difference of age. Both maids and little children and women. No regard to the sex distinction. Male or female. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark. You got the mark? Leave him alone. And begin at my sanctuary. They're standing at the threshold of the gate of the temple. God says begin right here. The guy goes off. The one with the linen, with the acorn. He leaves the temple and starts marking people. Those five men that are left are still there at the temple. He says begin here. And we may be, we may be, and I don't know, but if you go back to chapter 8, verse 16, he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, the door of the temple of the Lord. Between the porch and the altar were but five and twenty men, with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they worshiped the sun toward the east. Those may be the first twenty-five people who are going to be killed, because they're not going to be marked. They're worshiping Baal. If not, I know one thing by beginning at my sanctuary. I know one thing for sure. That would be the priest. Because that's where they're supposed to be. Whether they be priest of God or priest of Satan. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. Now, let's go back to chapter 8 again. We don't usually do this. We can go to chap chapter 8, verse... 11. And there stood before me 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. We studied that. Go back to chapter 8. 
that little private doorway. They're in there watching their art or their movie theater, whatever they're doing. And this guy walks in there and he starts, oh, don't need a mark. These people are excused because he tells the guy in the, with the linen, leave the temple. They are standing at the doorway of the temple. He does not enter. The, there is nobody in that temple that gets marked. Those five men turn around and say, Lord, you want, if they don't have a mark, kill them. Yes, sir. Go get them. They turn around and they walk in the temple and they start killing. Seventy or maybe ninety-five. Then they turn around or whoever's there at that time. Then they turn around and they go out amongst the city. That guy in the linen never turns around to go in the temple. There's no one in the temple being marked. And we are in a state of America like Judah, and we are, and like Jerusalem, we are. And the way the church is going to go apostate, and like the times of Noah, and like the times of Lot, and, you know, one man was saved from the flood. You say, well, by his family. The Bible records that Noah was a just man, not his sons and not his wives and their wives. Lot was the only one that was called out of Sodom. Uh, Sodom. Anybody else who would go with him, because he went to his his, his uh, sons-in-law. They mocked him. Jeremiah is one person. Ezekiel is one person. Jesus Christ is one person. Don't you think God could have sent Jesus Christ and all the cherubim down there? Hey, don't. Of all the angels in heaven, God sends one particular race of man to go witness. And I believe this, and you can throw this in the garbage can. I believe before the Lord comes back from the rapture, the church, there are going to be absolute, very few born-again, Bible-believing Christians serving the Lord. Just as much when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back from Israel, there's not going to be many Jews left. Do you read what it says? It says two will be grinded, one will be taken. He says two will be in the field, I think it is, and one will be taken. He says ten virgins, five were left behind. We read tonight, ten lepers and one guy came back and gave God the glory. You notice how a mass of people won twelve tribes of Israel and Jesus Christ came from one tribe. Adam had a whole bunch of sons, but we know of three. One went and served God. Jim. It's always the very minority. Minority. That do right. You want to talk about a minority in America? It's not a people of color, race, or anything like that. It's people who will do what the Bible tells them to do. That's the minority. And those are the people that you, you would want to give the job to. Because if they do what the Bible tells them to do, they're going to be faithful, they're going to be honest, and they're going to please God. So then, which began with the ancient, which were before the house. And he said unto them, Defile the house, the temple, defile it with dead bodies and blood. They have already defiled it with images and idolatry. And fill the courts with the slain. That's outside the house that Solomon built. Go ye forth. How do you like that for go ye in all the world? Go ye in all the world and kill all those that don't follow me. Big difference between the law and grace. And they went forth and slew in the city. Well, they already defiled the temple. Now they're going into the city. And it came to pass while they were slaying them, I was left. Out of the entire city, one man. And I fell upon my face and cried and said, Oh, Lord God, wilt thou destroy all the residue of Israel in the, where, yeah, in the pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? He's in Jerusalem. Where's Jeremiah? Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel in Judah is exceedingly great. This is why this is all happened. As it is in America. The land is full of blood, murder, 
They've been killing their babies. They've been offering them to Molech. They've been killing each other. They've been slaying the Lord's prophets, Jesus said. It's in that America. In a city full of perverseness. I don't see any more about that about, the, about America. For they say, the Lord has forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth, us not, seeth not. America said, we just don't want God. We don't want his word. And as for me also, my eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. So if you don't believe in the way, the truth, and the life, you're going to get your way. It won't be the truth, and it won't be a lie. It will be a lie. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. And we close off with this chapter. What is the trouble that, that Jeremiah said? What is the trouble Ezekiel said? Iniquity, murder, perverseness, and lying about God. That's where America is.